Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp. We're talking about our very first chapter, basics of software testing and continuing ahead with the same segment that is 1.4, the test process. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be stepping into the test execution phase and trying to understand that what exactly happens here. As a part of this particular phase, we now understand that it's time for us to quickly go ahead and start executions of all, all our test cases which we have written in past. Now the most important thing to understand is that have you done all the implementation tasks to make sure that you are ready for the execution, which could become one of the criteria to enter the test execution phase. Now during the test execution, the whole agenda is basically to make sure that you perform and execute all the test cases which you have planned for executing within this project. Now of course there are many other factors which will be influencing that. That's number one is that we are talking about the planned test cases. If you have planned for say for example 100 test cases respective to different levels, there are levels of testing like unit testing, integration testing, system testing and acceptance testing and many other non-functional testing. Don't be worried about the new terms. We'll be talking about them in steps. Okay, in upcoming videos, we'll be talking about all these terminologies in detail. Now, the most important thing is we have initially planned to run certain test cases and that's planned set of test cases will be executed here. The approach of executing a test case deals with reading the test case instructions, performing it on the application, and getting the actual results. Now, based on the execution, you compare the actual result with that of the expectation of a requirement and say if your test has passed or failed. If the requirement is deviating from the expectation, that's where you mark a test as fail and report a defect. We have discussed about the terminologies in our previous sessions that what exactly a defect is all about. Now each of these test cases will pass through the execution phase and we will keep consistently reporting defects for any failures which we observe on the screen. Now during the defect reporting we need to make sure that we capture all the relevant information which has to be passed on to the other stakeholders who will be looking forward to resolve our defects. Now generally I'm talking about developers who have built that application which we are trying to test. And at this point of time, we'll be building up all that information along with the defect report to tell them that, hey, this is what the problem is and this is what we performed as a test step and this is what happened. And I think this is not something meeting the expectations or the requirements which we have got. Now, the developers will look into your issues, will fix them and come back to you saying that, all right, can you check it once again? Now doing that work of rerunning the test once again is called as retesting. Retesting is basically to make sure that when we report an issue and then the developer says we have resolved it and they send it back to you, you perform the test once again to confirm if the defect has been fixed. To a certain extent, some of the organization also prefer to call it as confirmation testing. And the only approach will be to rerun the same test once again, right? On the other hand, when we talk about these changes being involved, we will also be making sure that the change has not impacted the other part of it. We'll be doing a deep dive into the confirmation and another one is called as regression testing. All we want to convey you at this point of time is that all possible executions, be it about testing the core functionalities, be it about testing the non-functional parameters like performance of the application, security of the application, or user friendliness of the application will all be executed as a part of this phase. During this phase, we'll also be identifying if there are any tests which we could not prepare. Why would you do that? You have done enough efficient planning to make sure that all the test cases have been written. But when you start a project, you are limited with key informations which you start writing test cases with. But when the product comes in front of you and you start interacting with it, there are a lot of further perception which builds up in your mind. And that certainly tells you that, hey, we did not write any test cases for this scenario. Or we did not think from this perception of a user that he or she can even do this type of task. Then you should be able to create a quick test covering those scenarios during the execution and run them too. But it certainly depends on the bandwidth what you have the timeline what is allocated to you because 
Maybe if I'm talking about five to six test cases, it doesn't make a difference. You can always accommodate. But if it is 50 to 60 test cases, which is coming to your mind, you need to discuss with your team manager or your test manager and then take a call on it. Because 50 to 60 test cases, writing them during execution and running them right there would consume a great amount of time. So managers should look into that. What's the need of writing these additional 50 to 60 test cases? Because not always your ideas can be incorporated within a fixed timeline which you are having with you. Right? So we take a call, we take a decision, we take some kind of understanding that this is how we can manage the best and we can deal with you know, fixing all that issues. Right? So we make sure all the defects reported should also be fixed within this cycle because we don't want to make sure that things are pending. And before you sign off with the test execution phase, we make sure all the executions are completed, all the defects which were reported has been resolved and anything which we were supposed to do as a part of the execution part is all done here. So tracking the defect, running the executions, writing some custom new test cases, which might be a requirement of the specification, which never came to your mind initially with just a theoretical information, right? You can always go ahead and write those test cases, but if they are huge, you talk to your test manager to see and see the possibilities of having some bandwidth to do write test cases and execute them right? Keeping it short and simple, this is what to tell you what exactly test execution phase is all about. And we'll be looking forward to understand more in depth as we proceed with our learnings. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.